So this cop has done this a few times, and that can be proven. Okay, one warrant, one warrant he wrote that he writes, Chief Broadway. Doesn't even include his name. Puts my name on it, spells it incorrectly. I'm telling his guys, they, they bring three and five and six sheriffs for me. They bring gorillas when they get a call on me. So I says, so he says, I got to arrest you, this one cop, one of his flunkies. I says, okay. So I walk towards him. He's backing away from me. I says, I can't play this game with you. Give me the fucking handcuffs and I'll, I'll put them on myself. I'll be home before you get out of that goddamn Sally port. And I was that day. So they amended that warrant. Now with all of this, we're trying to go after this guy who stole the truck. His mother is some sort of a state employee. So I think she's with the parole probation department or something. Because they're sending all of these bail bondsmen here, you know? Bail bondsmen have a lot to lose if they screw up. So the way we figured it, and I even asked the bail bondsman's buddy, he brings a tree with him, this cat named Tony Dorsey. And I look at Tony when the video's off, you know? He's in the, he's in the car, reaching in the car, and I, and I lean in the driver's side. The cop is over talking to the, to the one bail bondsman, Ronaldo Langley. And I look down at Tony, and I says, you here for me, ain't you? You here to fucking mash my mouth, ain't you? Let's do this right now, man. He says, he looks at me, he says, I know who you are. I says, you goddamn straight, you know who I am. I flatten your fucking face. He says, and he's three times my size, this homeboy. He says, I'll reach and take this gun right here. I says, go ahead and reach for the gun, man. I'll kick you square in the teeth. You'll be sleeping before you hit the ground. So now he's standing there, close enough to a gun to grab it, but scared you. So we got the video on. We re I realized at a certain point this Tony Dorsey is scoping out and he's calling him over there lining me up and manned her up for the shot and that's when I tell him on the video tape you pointing a fucking gun at me and that guy's gonna answer to me one day for pointing a gun at me before this is all over with because I'm trying to avoid losing my mind and just acting like somebody who's been victimized and going out and doing a dozen and a half scumbags at that rate, somebody's going to have to say, what the fuck happens here? Man, don't go crazy and fuck up fucking take out a dozen and a half scumbags for no reason. And I'll be dead, but so will they. I'm to the point where I'm like, you know, get us our truck back. The guy who tampered with a witness, it takes me two and a half months to find out who he is, figure out where he's located. I call his chief back, I says... Here's the name and the address of the witness tamper. He says, oh, well, I'm going to go down and talk to his mom and dad. I'm wondering how much does this envelope fucking contain? You know? A couple of days later, we drive by this cop's house. He's got a brand new Zero Turn and a brand new Nissan. Okay? On a cop's salary. He went from driving a piece of shit to driving creme de like crap. This is going on back and forth, back and forth. I still got gangsters showing up here at the house, and I'm, I'm telling you, you, want to fight? We'll fight right now, man. No fucking problem. And they don't. They're punks, you know? They're kids. 25-year-old punks. So with this, I come into contact. My wife, one day I come home, my wife's all fucked up. I mean, really strange out. And I look at her, and I says, man, what's going on? And she's not talking. And she's looking scared, terrified. I'm saying, man, what the fuck is happening? She said, I don't want to talk. I just leave me alone. A couple of days goes by, man. I prompted out of her. I need to know what the fuck is going on with you. What the fuck is happening here? You're acting strange like somebody attacked you. And that's when she blurted it out. She says, I was attacked. The fucking cops came here and raped me to teach you a lesson. They did this to me for a couple of hours while you were held up in town. The chief of police brought him here, okay? I confronted the chief of police the other day, told him, my fucking wife told me you brought them scumbags here, and then when, he, when she opened the door because she recognized you, they pushed their way in and you left, okay? I called to make a fucking report. This scumbag chief shows up to file a rape report. Amanda's terrified. She won't talk at all. You know, he's even tried to revisit and talk about, remember I told you and I asked her? He's a real scumbag. And the reason he is is because, 
Before he was a cop, he worked at the local emergency room in Stanford Hospital. Now, back then, they didn't have walls and doors. They had curtains. Okay? I'm in there for kidney stones. I, oh, was, yeah. I was a bodybuilder while I was in prison, man. Yeah, I've had those before, too. I felt <laughs> safe. So, he's minding my private medical business. I'm thinking he's a nurse, and I'm, I'm like, nurse, please go get me a doctor. I need a shot. I'm about to faint from the pain I'm in, you know? Kidney stones hurt. Yeah. At but, this point, at this point, he tells me, he says, well, I'm not a nurse. I'm an intern. I'm, I'm like an orderly. I says, you're an intern? I says, you mean you empty urinals and shit pants and change pukey sheets? He says, well, that's some of it. I says, you mop up puke? You're going to be mopping up your own fucking blood in a minute. Mind my personal matters? I says, get your fat little face out of my fucking tent right now. I'll take that metal bedpan and fold it right around your head. I'm 220 pounds, buddy, and there ain't a body part on me that's soft. Everything is ripped. Okay? I just got done doing time at Supermax. So... 20-something years later, three years ago, three and a half years ago, this little fat bastard cocks his head at a certain angle. I tell my wife, I says, man, remember the story I told you about the ER that time? She says, yeah. I says, he's the guy. She says, get out of here. I says, no, he's him. Uh, he, he tilted his head in such a way that I just recognized him after dealing with this prick for the last 10 years. She says, no way. I says, I bet you what. I bet you you pull the work records up and that's where he fucking worked before he was a cop. I must have scared him so fucking straight that he became a cop. Because when I was in the emergency room that day, all of the all of the staff that was in there, they started calling the police, man. All of a sudden, about seven or eight big cops show up, you know? Talking about, is there a problem here? I says, yeah, that little fat fuck right there is minding my private medical information. That's the problem. He's getting ready to get decked. So everything was everything. I filled out a complaint that day, 20-something years ago. So that should be on record. The patient advocate came and talked to me, you know. And uh, he's had a hard-on for us ever since. Anytime there was anything going on here, oh, it's, it's irrelevant. It's nothing. I'm not even going to do paperwork on it. This little punk steals some shit from me a couple of weeks ago. I pull up his Facebook page. Chief of police is his friend on his Facebook. That's why he didn't get charged. Susan mm. Matthews was consoled about it. And then I asked, well, we want to place charges. Right now, I remember that bitch. I remember her when she was snapping fucking bubble gum, working an internship at the DA's office, and she was only 22. She's a real prim and proper wannabe. Oh, my mommy and daddy were able to send me to Campbell. Somebody needs to kick her with pointy fucking toe shoes right up the asshole. I'm calling her because now, present day, since my wife was killed, I'm getting death threats. Guy calls me up while a cop is here to cover the stolen shit from the yard sale. This guy calls me up. He says, I'm the truck driver that ran your wife down. Me and Lieutenant Garden, we raped her. We took turns on her, forced her to give us blowjobs. We broke her neck by accident. We threw her under the fucking truck. I says, buddy, there's a cop standing right here listening to your whole confession. He's like, fuck her, fuck him. I don't give a shit. I says, you're really not thinking I'm, I'm telling you the truth. There's a police officer on duty listening to your bullshit. We're going to catch you. When they catch you, when we're in the courtroom, I'm going to grab you. I'm gonna fucking grab you, man. You're gonna you're gonna feel like a goddamn mouse when that fucking eagle snatches you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I says I'm not kidding, man. I'm gonna pull your fucking tongue out of your head. You just said all of this foul shit about my wife to me all of these months. Now I got people who heard you say it because I've had several cops listening to this asshole. I couldn't even get my own phone records. They had to file a subpoena and a warrant to get the phone information from my own phone. Shit's been thrown in our game this whole time. With Amanda telling me she got raped here two years ago, she don't feel safe, you know. I says, well, your mother's hounding you with her bullshit. Why don't you stay with her for a while? Let me see if I can get to the fucking bottom of whoever this is. 
you know, at one point, I'm telling you, you don't have to press charges. Just tell me who it is. All you got to do is tell me who it is, and I'll fucking stab the shit out of him. And she knew that. I'll disembowel them. With one maneuver, I'll take their cock off and open their belly up from fucking navel to neck and spill their entrails out, man. She's saying, no, 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 I don't want that. I'm saying, okay, then don't worry about it. I get somebody else to do it. Somebody's got to be punished for your shambles, for you being in a wreck. She says, no, no, I'll just go to my mom's. So she's at her mom's during nine months. She gets brought into their county jail for a couple of weeks for trespassing. She was probably hanging out at a store, and the cashier probably got a noise junkie because my wife is a good-looking woman. She looks like Haley Berry. So some little white cracker bitch probably got her nose jointed up there and had her arrested just to be a cunt. And my wife is in jail for two weeks. And I have a sneaking suspicion, like I'm 110% right, that this scumbag chief of police did an APB, notify when located. And that's what happened. Five weeks after she gets out of jail, she's dead. And I'm not even certain that she's dead. I can't get any pictures from a coroner's report. I can't get any pictures from a funeral home. There was no pictures taken at the scene of this uh, alleged accident. This is murder. No pictures, no autopsy, whole fucking things. Mail was gone into, the postmaster general is looking at it, and they're promising me if we catch him with his hands, the cop up there that, that took over her investigation, he removed the cop from the case. And anytime a cop removes a cop from the case, there's reason to be concerned. Red flags. So, the woman at the post office general, she says, if this is true, what you're saying, he will be arrested on the spot. And he'll be federal, and then we can step in and take a look at what happened with your wife. That's what I'm waiting for. I called them again yesterday, because I had filed the complaint last week. I'm sitting on my porch a couple of weeks back. I had to rebuild my wife's flower box around the mailbox, because the junkie up the block ran it over. I tell this punk town manager, I want to start lodging complaints about the hate crimes and about your comps. He denies me. I'm not doing it. I said, I need you to contact the State Bureau of Investigation. This was before my wife was killed. That night, my fucking mailbox gets run down. I mean, run down. You can't fuck this car all up. He put the kid up to it. Okay? This kid's on methamphetamines or whatever. So, I'm trying to get to the bottom of what happened to my wife, because they wake me up at four in the morning and tell me she's dead. So with this, these next couple of hours after that, I contact this cop. This cop is a smart ass. I says, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to your fucking chief. He says, well, I'm the investigator. I says, you know you're that. The other cop is awesome. He says, I removed him from the case. I says, look, my wife wouldn't have stepped out in front of a truck. She wouldn't have danced out in front of it. She was thrown in front of it, or she was in the cab of that truck. I want that truck's insides checked to see if there's any of my wife's hair or fingerprints or spittle. No, I'm not doing that. I says, what do you mean you're not doing that? Well, it's evidence. She was underneath the truck. I says, look, man, she's dead, you're telling me, and I want an investigated problem. This is going back and forth. I tell this cop, I says, where is this truck now? You know, that fucking truck has been on the road a week after it killed her. It splashed her all over the highway, and then he hangs up on me, you know? With that, I'm fucking flaming. I'm fuming, you know, telling him, you motherfucker, and he hangs up. I'm calling, he's calling me back a minute later, and I'm, I'm steady getting madder and infuriated. So, this past weekend... Newsbreak bings my phone. Newsbreak says the truck driver, who knows nothing about the neighborhood, he is only in that neighborhood making deliveries on his route from South Carolina. Uh, the newsbreak comes on. This truck driver's brother is busted in Granite Falls, which is only a couple of minutes away from Hickory, slinging drugs and traffic. Okay. He's doing all sorts of this shit, and I'm like, I want this guy questions. Give me one second, I have to use the bathroom, okay, buddy? Uh -huh. Give me one second, I have to use the bathroom. Okay. I, I, I tore a damn 
piece of my intestines up, man. Ain't no problem. Some fucking yeah. and shit. Just give me a half a second. Okay. I am so soft. You're not going to be able to see. So with all this, the truck driver's name is John Thomas McCullough from Rock Hill, South Carolina. With all this, his brother Jarvis led on McCullough is busted September 8th, trafficking heroin, cocaine, fentanyl, crack, everything else that goes with whatever you could do in drug trade. This motherfucker is out on a $30,000 secured bond before the ink dries. He's out the same day. I'm going to ask him, no, man. Can you question this son of a bitch to see if he knows anything about his brother running my wife now? You were telling me he, the, the truck driver is a holy roller, a Bible thumping kind of guy. And I come to find out his thug brother and his thug sister are conducting business in a town that you said they don't know nothing about. The fucking cop and his captain tell me, don't call here no more because we'll have you charged with harassment. I said, one day I'm going to fucking be up there and you're not going to be able to contain me. I haven't come up there in all of this time because I know I'm not mentally straight to yet. I'll beat the shit out of him. My past is my past. I'm no stranger to punching a cop out, man. Okay? I'm no stranger that when a cop grabs a hold of me violently, I break his fucking fingers for him, man. I poke him in the eye. I've done this before. I ain't gotten in any trouble in 20 years. I've been married all of that time. So, when this cop, when this guy calls and he tells me he's the truck driver, the cop who's covering the case was his partner, they accidentally broke a man's neck and that's why she went under the truck, I'm telling him, a cop is listening to your confession. Now this fucking chief of police is telling me, Oh, that's out of our jurisdiction. And I'm saying, you motherfucker, no, it's not. He just confessed to a murder, which will now include you, because you heard. He says, no, nah, there's nothing. This cop has been doing a lot. This chief of police I come to find out last year, he sexually harassed one of my friend's girlfriends 17 years ago so bad that her mother had to punch this cop in the mouth when he was a regular cop with no rank. And she caught a charge. You understand? Yeah. I got a cop from the sheriff's department that's willing to affirm and confirm everything I say. This cop, he shows up. He's a Mexican cat. He shows up when all this is going on. He even goes down to the guy's house and stole the truck, you know? And he's trying to fucking tell him you need to get the truck back. I tell this cop, I says, I says you're not one of them. You're neither black nor white. You're Latino. He says, I'm Mexican. I says, I says, they look at you worse than they look at me and her. I says, you better watch your ass with them because you showed concern for me and they hate me. Well, none of them grab a hold of me. They won't grab, it's not a good thing to grab a hold of me, homeboy. I'm the kind of guy that has no problem with sticking my fingers right in somebody's eye, man. I don't care if the fucking eye collapses or comes out. You put your hands on me, I didn't do nothing to you. Your God says my body is my temple and I should protect it with diligence. So this is all going on. This cop comes back to me one day. He says, you were right. I says, what do you mean? He says, them son of a bitches set me up on a dark fucking road. And I had a feeling I was going to get gunned down. I stayed there for 10 or 15 minutes and I got the hell out of there. They didn't send no backup for me. I didn't give a shit about some empty warehouse, you know? And then he quit. He quits the force. I says, do you got my back? When this all comes to 
I wouldn't recommend mentioning a, I wouldn't recommend mentioning those particular compounds to the FBI like that and, well, and that. that
until 2.30 in the morning. He says, well, I'll check. He gets back on the phone with me the next day. He says, I didn't see nothing. I said, you went to the Hardys in Granite Falls and you retraced all the footsteps? He said, oh, no, no. I went to the Hardys in Hickory. I said, you need to stop fucking this case up, man. For real. That's where he became more insulted and shit. And he tells me, what are you, drunk? What are you on, drugs? At that point, I tell him, man, you need to get in your fucking car and drive to my house and I'll teach you a lesson to talk to me like that. You won't be able to speak through that fucking mouth for a couple of months. If I could reach through the phone right now and squeeze your fucking face, I'd put my fingers in your mouth and peel your face off your skull. If you can't talk to me like that, I said, I just did, you fucking punk. In the end, we're going to get to the bottom of this. In the end, we're going to find out just exactly how much you made to make her death look like an accident. What they give you, 10000 15000 in an envelope? Chuck driver got a special envelope on the floorboard for this kind of thing. That's when I finally get a hold of his boss, the captain. And that motherfucker, he's just as worse as this cop, you know? There's one or two cops here that are realizing what's going on, and their chief is compelling them. But they're cops. They're young kid cops, 25 years old and shit. And they're like, something ain't jiving here. A lot ain't jiving here. The one cop has told me, you know, I wasn't even on the force at this department when all of that shit happened to you. I want you to know that. I said, yeah, but you played into the bullshit a little bit yourself, too. He says, what do you mean? I says, well, there was a point where I wanted you to arrest my wife. And because she was holding this scumbag's hand who was trying to get in her pants, this little cocksucker up the block is trying to take advantage of my wife's situation. She's in a fucking full-blown psychosis. She's telling me shit like I'm an imposter, you know? I said to the cop, I said, I want you to arrest him. Because during this time, I'm doing IVCs. That's called an involuntary commitment order. To get to the bottom of her ailment, which is she's been raped. And she was gang raped in our bedroom and fucked her all up, you know? So, that's where I am at now. I've got video, numerous videotapes of every Sunday some different cop impersonating. I'm telling the cops that the city cops here, I'm saying, I want a motherfucker arrested for impersonating an officer. Oh, well, I wasn't here to see him do it, you know, playing the role. I said, you're just going to keep fucking with me and you're not going to be happy until I decapitate somebody. Until I take somebody's fucking head right off this. Well, you ain't allowed to say that. I says, no. I said, what part of this fucking town did I cross over into that my First Amendment rights disappeared? He said, well, that's communicating a threat. I said, no, that's making a fucking promise, first of all. Second of all, I didn't directly threaten anybody. Who did I threaten? I, com- I communicated a threat to thin air? I said, you're done here. Get the fuck out of my yard. The police won't grab me, okay? I'm, I'm fucking cock diesel, and I know a good thing about Chinese food. Chinese culture. <laughs> I'm not the guy to grab, Jack. I'm not the guy to put your hands on that. I made it through prison fine. You know why? I have no problem with showing somebody the other side of their eyeball. When you come in here telling me, hey, man, you're like, you're my girlfriend? I'm telling you now, you want to get away from me, man. And when you put your hands on me, man, you might get stabbed as shit with a toothbrush, man. <laughs> so, yeah. All of these things are true. I'm willing to be doped up with sodium pentothal. And you can put me on a lie detector test. You can put so much sodium pentothal in me that you bring me to the threshold of death. I don't do drugs. I don't drink. Every once in a while, I might hit one of my friends born. Okay? I got nothing to lie about. I got nothing to exaggerate about. I got nothing to, to blow this up to what it isn't or is. The truth is, is what it said. And once an FBI agent gets here, you know, if they start telling me, ah, we're not going to arrest anybody, that motherfucker might become my hostage. You know? Fuck this shit. She's dead. Maybe if I fucking, if I do one or two things, somebody in the world will say something made him fucking snap. He went from being a regular guy, making a living, going to work, to fucking losing his mind. I just want the story to be told. I want that bitch, Susan Matthews, I want her out of office. I want her included 
because she had privy information before she was district attorney of what went on in our lives. I called her a couple of weeks ago and told her, ma'am, I want my Second Amendment rights back. I need to have a gun in my house. I'm getting death threats over the phone. Cops are witnessing. I'm getting bullet holes in my house. Cops are here witnessing it. I need to be able to protect myself. I wasn't convicted of a crime of violence. I was convicted of a driving charge, man. Oh, well, I'll get back into it and look into it. It wasn't until last week when I looked at your page and I realized who Susan Mackey was. I remember her punk fucking ass running around Willington. Oh, I'm a Campbell girl, you know? Oh, I'm a Campbell girl. Like, fucking Campbell College is like fucking Princeton here or something, you know? I says, says, you motherfuckers don't know what wealthy is. First of all, the people that I know who have wealth that live out in, like, the fucking Hamptons, your year's salary couldn't pay the month's rent on one of their beach houses, man. Really. You know, you're talking about $35,000 a month rentals, man. (laughs) So, what we have here is a bunch of 10 cent millionaires who really abused the shit out of my wife and I. In the end, the black folks who are our friends and a couple of white folks, they tell me, they says, you don't get it, do you? I says, no, I really don't. He says, it's not you. It's not her. It's the both of you here together in this little shit box house that you've turned into a pearl that I've rebuilt and turned into a nice little gem. They don't want you here in the middle of town. If you were flying a rebel flag off your fucking front lawn, they might want you here. You know, I says, ah. I see, I, I see what you're getting to now. In order for them to hurt me, they hurt my wife. Like I said, I'm not the good guy to put your fucking hands on, you know, and everybody knows that. I've had, I've had to fight before. I used to fight for money, okay? That's how I used to make my money. I have ribbons and trophies and a whole bunch of other shit that says, I can pretty much take the shit out of you without trying hard. I welcome your Aikido, your Bushido, your Taekwondo, your Jiu-Jitsu, your Jiu-Jitsu, your Crab Magna, whatever it is, you know, Kempo. I've been doing this for 45 years, man. I didn't waste my time. I'm self-taught. And I'm good at what I do. So with all of this, the cops ain't gonna fucking... I have one cop here talking about this and that. I picked up a brick and punched it in the head. I says, you think your face is harder than this brick for real? You know, you got pretty big arms, Jack. And true, if you get a hold of me, you might fuck me up. But but if I hit you once in the face, man, it's going to crush your skull. (laughs) This this 3,500 pounds worth of talk coming out of my arms. My feet too, man. You know? For a while, I had to sit out on the fucking front lawn and, and, and last my wife would get a kick out of it. I'd lash my hands behind my back. Sometimes I'd put a fucking blindfold on. And I'd do a few backward roundhouses, maybe a hurricane tornado kick, maybe a split, land it, stick it, do an area or a flip. And people were sitting there saying, wow, that's with your fucking hands behind your back with a blindfold on? Yeah, man. Yeah. When I tell you I'm going to kick you in the nuts, you're going to taste them. You're going to taste them. You know? So with all of this, they go after her. They know it can't hurt me. If you put your hands on me, man, I'd be psychotic. I don't, I, I don't like being fucking handled, you know? That's uh, my body, man. I only got one of them. I don't handle people in general principle as a general fact of the matter. Because, you know, I grab a hold of somebody too hard, man. It only takes about seven, eight pounds of pressure to break a bone in the human body. When you practice that and it becomes second nature, you kind of become dangerous to yourself, man. You know? So, as a rule of thumb, I ain't had to smack nobody around in a couple of years. You know? Just my reputation carries me. When I was younger, I used to hang out with a bunch of fighters in the neighborhood. When the police would come, they'd be saying, Nah, don't fuck with him. Leave him alone. He ain't worth it. (laughs) Or they'd be saying something like, Be careful with him. He can fight good. You know, and you know, all of this shit that's happened Oops. all derives from a stolen truck and me telling a punk intern who wound up being chief of police that he was a punk, that he was a little faggot, you know. 
I have a question. I says, what a little fat boy like you ain't fucking working up here with the bitches? Are you homosexual? I says, how come you ain't in the armed forces at your age, man? Usually most guys at your age are in the army or the navy or the marines, man. What's your deal? The Air Force will take you. The Air Force likes to take girly girls. <laughs> you know, I don't recommend the marines because they'll the fucking drum you out. The army, they're just as hard, man. You'll be in Foxtrot Brigade, buddy. He says, uh, he says, the Air Force will take you. Yeah, I ragged the shit out of that guy today in the hospital. You know, because of what he did. Jumped back two years ago. I'm trying to get my wife put in the hospital. They are trying to trap me off. They hold a special meeting for the chief of police, Vernon Stewart, and Christopher Autry for me. They're trying to trap me off. They're trying to get me to threaten them on court minutes. You know, there's a stenographer in them. So we get to the point of, I need help. And with your three signatures on a medical form, I can have my wife put in a hospital and she can get, you know, her situation dealt with. She can get the help she needs. Oh, we're not doing that. That's not our job. I says, that is your job. I says, we're not indigent, but we're not wealthy. And the law is designed for you to do your job to help people like us. They start laughing and, and, and chuckling about, yeah, she's not as alone because at that point she was fucking far out, you know? <laughs> And uh, I can't get him to stop giggling and laughing. And that's when I told him, I says, I says to the stenographer, I says, every word that we say is recorded. She says, yes, sir. Even what I just said. I says, meaning what she just said. I says, good. I says, let me tell you guys something. If she jumps into a car and runs over a school bus load full of kids and kills them all, she's not going to be in the kind of trouble. You're not going to charge her. At that point, I'm going to punch somebody's mouth. And it's all being kept on record, you know. And he said, what do you mean punch somebody's mouth? I said, what didn't you understand about it? If she gets into some hairy shit that could have been avoided and people didn't do their jobs, I'm going to punch the mouths. And the the, the all three of them at the same time are saying, are you directing that at me? And I says, did I direct it at you? No. I says, I know you're keeping a recording here. What do you think, I'm retarded? They wouldn't stop giggling about her condition. I said, let me tell you what, man. If she gets killed, she kills herself, or anything other under the sun, I'm going to seek to have you three charged with criminal negligence, dereliction of duty, and contributory to whatever fucking mess she gets herself into. And that's when the meeting ended. I told the stenographer, I said, did you get that? She says, I got every word of it. I says, good. About three weeks ago, I'm going to an attorney. This cop is chasing my attorneys away. This is the third attorney that I've had handling her case. And I called him on it. I called up there and I said, I don't know which cop it is. They keep scaring my attorneys away. But I sure hope I ain't fucking present when I overhear it because I'm not going to be responsible for my actions. I'll go to a goddamn hospital. So will they. And he said, is that a threat? I said, no, that's a guarantee. Did I direct a threat at you? So, uh, about a week ago, I tell this chief of police, I says, your motherfucker Amanda told me part of the story. She says, you brought her rapist here, and then you turned around and walked away. Oh, I did not. I'm so insulted over that. I said, I don't give a fuck what you is, man. You expect me to believe you over my wife? I says, this ain't over with, man. You're going to be exposed. You're going to go to fucking jail. You don't want to do your job. Eventually, it's all going to come out in the wash. And I'm going to be goddamn insistent that everybody I dealt with behind this and you antagonized us and you derived pleasure from inflicting pain and suffering on us. I'm going to sue the dick off you. Your mom ain't going to be able to own your underwear or your pencil. I'm going to take every fucking thing you've got. And that's where I'm at now, man. Mm -hmm. You know? I'm waiting for my attorney to tell me this and that. I texted my attorney and let them know about the drug dealing, kingpin, trafficking brother of the driver. You know, at one point, I'm thinking, is, is, is my wife alive? Did I cremate somebody else's body, man? They're badgering me the whole time that she's dead, saying, you got to do something. Are you going to cremate her? We're waiting for you to cremate her. We got a good deal for you. You don't want to come and see her. Her face is ripped off, you know, and I'm like in shock, you know. Her mother's a dingbat. My wife's mother is a dingbat. My wife was supposed to be with her mother, and instead she was wandering the goddamn streets. And so 
somebody either she walked across the drugs she may have walked up on these on this cop the brother and a truck driver exchanging drugs and money you know and they probably said fuck that grab her uh the the on the autopsy report there's blunt force trauma all about her body uh, there shouldn't be blunt force trauma she went under the drugs she may have hit the ground once or twice and got stuck so there shouldn't be all sorts of bumps and fucking bruises all over. And then the damage to her body does not coincide with being dragged two football fields down the road. You know, from the autopsy report, it's just saying abrasions and shit. Abrasions and contusions, no laceration. Very, uh, I think there's one minute laceration. Scrapes and bruises. And I'm telling them, this ain't fucking right. This ain't jiving. First of all, my wife wouldn't be in the road, okay? We live 50 feet from the road. Our whole relationship together, every house that we've owned, we've owned three different houses. Was One one house, one house was you open the front door in Wellington. It's on a Ross Road. But at Lumber Yard, you open the front door, you step off the porch, you're in the street. <laughs> this, the front porch was bumped right against the damn street our other house same thing 50 feet away from the major road where tractor trailers come this house same thing before she was with me her grandmother's house who raised her because her mother is a fucking flop the grandmother's house same thing 50 feet from the road the one beating that my wife was fond of that she caught from her grandmother at three years old was about running towards the road. She learned to never do that again. Her grandmother was a jailer. She was a deputy. Uh, from what I understand, she took a switch off the tree and beat her little ass for a minute to convince her you don't want to go near that road. Amanda had a fear of the road. Like somebody would have the fear of water if they didn't know how to swim. So, and on the autopsy report, they're saying she was on her back. She was on her back. Well, that means she had to be facing the fucking vehicle when she got hit. Because if she would have been on her front, that would have meant that she was walking with traffic, not against it. They tried to tell me that she crossed over four lanes of the highway, and it's not. She's on the right side of the road. And they're saying she stepped over the white line into the road. Where I says, no, nah, that's a lie. And she wouldn't get anywhere eight feet near that white line if she didn't have to. If she could walk on the grass or a sidewalk, she wouldn't be no closer than eight feet to that fucking white line. Just out of habit. They killed her, man. Mm. You know? I'm hoping, because I've got her jewelry, and I don't know if that's what they were looking for, too, when they went through her mail. I'm hoping she got to punch somebody in the face and that somebody can examine the jewelry and say, okay, we got some samples here. Because when you become a cop the last 20 years, you get blood type too. Back in 1996, the laws changed and the new laws came into effect. Well, anybody convicted of a felony and a misdemeanor, I think, is blood types. Your shit goes into CODIS, NCIC and shit like that. And it's on record, you know? So this way, after you get out of prison, if you do a crime and you get away with it, but you left DNA there, that shit gets punched into a computer. A computer analyzes it by a spectroanalysis, and then it matches it up to whoever the owner is. That's how they're busting rapes. 20 years after they happened. You see, that law went into effect in 1996. I know I got into a fight with a couple of damn prison guards over it. You know, they took my ass to the hall over it. They had to take me to the hall. They wound up getting my blood anyway. You know, I was like, I ain't here for a violent crime, man. That, that doesn't matter. We blood type everybody who comes to the Department of Corrections. You get the blood typed if it's after 1996. I said, my shit didn't happen after 1996. We don't give a shit. <laughs> they had to send the perk team in for me. That's, you know, six or seven big guys with shields on a fucking bed mattress, and they throw it on you, and then they beat you up for a minute. <laughs> so you say, okay, okay, I'll be good. <laughs> I'm just wanting justice for my wife, man. I want to be able to go to my wife's grave and tell her, little fat jam chief of police he's going down for what he did Vernon Stewart and Christopher Autry I, I the Christopher Autry he always had a cop
cop around them because I made it clear to him I'd kick your fucking asses if you go me the wrong way. It's a, it's a, a, a minute can last the god awful long time when you're in a courthouse waiting for the bailiffs to get around to grabbing you. Yeah. So, yeah, I've had my full of them. You're right, they're scumbags. And I can believe everything you say that they did to you because they did the same thing to me. See, back in... Oh, I guess it was back in 1997. Them motherfuckers attacked me. There used to be an old courthouse in Lillington. And the district attorney's office used to be right by that library. Mm -hmm. I go into that district attorney's office one day because a cop tried to hit me. Cop tried to bump me, you know. I says to the district attorney, I says, I want to speak to the district attorney. He's hiding behind the door. He won't come out. All of a sudden, a dozen Mm -hmm. cops come into that office and we're fighting. (laughs) <laughs> you know so they had their fear full of that you know they, they did things wrong I was in a situation where okay you drop the charges and I won't pursue a lawsuit and that's what they did but yeah they, they had I've had problems with them since the 90s hmm. they're very crooked bastards over there I know what happened to John Diegas, to, to to John Livingston I know exactly what happened I don't even have to have had been there to know. Just sure. to know about John, that cop probably grabbed him by the beard, and then John probably beat the shit out. They of him. did the same thing. They did the same thing to him. They did to us probably, and except he probably, except he probably struggled a little more, he, or he probably struggled. I didn't no, struggle. You know, I didn't struggle at all. I mean, he John probably. Had, that's why he got had, shot. John I think. Had but, ZZ, John had a ZZ top beard. Yeah. And he was a carpenter. He was strong, and he was young. Okay, he's 10, 15 years younger than me. But without that beard on his face, he looked like me. It would be like looking at me, man. You know, if we were standing together, people would naturally say, are you guys brothers? I'm pretty sure that what happened is they went to his house, and I hope they didn't mistake 